So when did you get involved in dogs? Uh, I was probably like two years old, and my uh, dad in 99 got this male named Thor. And then a year later, he got a female named Dixie. And I grew up with him. Like, Dixie was 10, and Thor was 17 when he passed away. So I grew up with him my whole life, mm-hmm. like, as a young child. And uh, they were pit, they were, a couple. They were, they were pit bulls as well? Yes, sir. Uh, one was a seal male with the white streak up his nose, like a lot of Thompson's dogs. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the female was black and white patched. Okay. Yeah, they were Zebo and Colby dogs. Oh, cool. Very intense, very energetic. You definitely didn't give these dogs to the wrong people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And I honestly don't even know if any of the blood exists anymore. He produced 60 puppies and we shipped some over the internet and some to California. Um, right. I just don't know if any of the blood's even still around, to be honest with you. They were intense. Now, I know we uh, covered this before, but where where are you located? Uh, Waynesville, North Carolina, Western North Carolina. So you're in the mountains? Yes, sir. Man. Uh, I'm looking at them every direction. <laughs> uh, what I wouldn't give. I'm so jealous. <laughs> um, we got a lot of freedom on dogs, too, honestly. I've talked to the local, uh, all the local authorities and everything, and you don't even have to have, like, licensing or nothing to do it. Now, what about, like, um, what about, like, uh, co- like codes? Like, do you have to have, like, some kind of permit if you wanted to build, say, a kennel building or something like that? Yeah, if it was over so big, it, you would have to get a permit. But where I do 10 by 10 lots and, uh, then chain spots. Okay. Alternate them. I got like seven lots and six chain spots. How many dogs do you have now? Uh, I have 14 as of right now. And how many of those did you produce? Uh, four of them. Four? That's four cool. Yes, sir. I bought a male from, he's a fawn male. He's American Bully from Diamond Bully Kennels. And then uh, I bought a white and on pieball female from Mandela Effect Kennels and uh, I got a black female from Nick Pleasance and she's an American Pitbull Terrier uh, other ones are related to my family's bloodline on my mom's side okay that she bled and what, kind, mom, of, what kind of dogs were those uh, they're American Pitbull Terriers too they're Bolio bloodline okay yes sir very cool um yeah, they're also very intense dogs. Yeah, was- yeah. I, I I talked a bunch with um with Pat Patrick and um Bolio, man. What a dog. Yes, sir. I thought the way Pat Patrick loved Bolio is the way I love my male Mason. Is he your That's Bolio wild. dog? Oh uh, yes, sir. He's uh he'll be seven December eighteenth, and I just started breeding him last year. I I refused to breed him before he was too old and stuff. I got gotcha. you. So you yeah. try to keep your breedings very limited. Yeah, I don't. I breed very select. Put them in select hands. I gave away more than I sold, honestly, because yeah. I just didn't want them going to the wrong people, and I wanted them around. So pretty much just enough to, just enough to cover the food and vet bills. Then. I mean, I do most of that out of pocket, honestly. Uh, I I made a little bit off of the. Uh, last two litters but i built a whelping uh kennel mm. and wood process was ridiculous at the time yeah how long ago was that uh they're four months old now so okay, about so five yeah. months ago yeah <laughs> yeah lumber was uh it was ridiculous yeah it was it was like drugs i mean <laughs> <laughs> all that those all those true. memes that you've seen on facebook like yo i got a stack of two by fours for sale for the low Oh, I'm so glad nobody stole nothing out of my yard. Holy cow. I had a whole pile of it in my yard, building that thing. So your family's originally from Waynesville, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, we're all natives. Been here for a really long time. Very cool. Yeah. I'm like the 12th generation that's here since the 1850s. Something like that. That's awesome, man. Um, All but you young reproducers <laughs> that's why i don't breed my dogs young <laughs> <laughs> yeah i understand that um, <laughs> i had my first kid young i get it um 
So walk me through your yard. You said you're primarily focused on the working pit bulldog. So with that said, are you taking pit bull terriers and bullies and things like that and, and crossing them? Uh, no, I'm going to have a bully line that's just straight bullies. That's off of the two bullies I bought from Kennels. And then my bolio line, uh, he had had a, like one blue dog bred in him in the 90s. So I'm just like trying to stray away from blue genetics, like be- reading on a gene pool mm-hmm. more than pedigree, like taking it what the dogs physically looked like mm-hmm. and like putting all that together to create the dogs that are on the ground at that time. I gotcha. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a lot of events in my area and stuff like, so it's really kind of a waste of money to even register. I have three dogs on my yard and not a single one of them's papers are sent off right now. Right. Like one of them is because he belongs to uh diamond bully kennels. Right. But I don't love registries and I don't love papers because I think it's a lot of like, they put a big name on it and make it worth what it is versus it actually, the dogs actually being a higher quality than even if the dogs without papers. Right. And, uh, I fully agree. I, I've had many backyard bred dogs with no papers, no pedigree who were amazing, amazing animals. Um, I just think the, uh, I think the kennel club scene has too much politics involved and, yes. uh, and everybody's a liar. Yeah, that's the truth too. <laughs> you know, everybody's hanging papers. I'm like, well, screw that. Like you, and then, you know, for a while I thought like, well, you could always DNA test the dog. And then I'm like, wait a second. If I ask for a DNA swab, they could easily take it from a different dog and just put a different dog's name on it. Yeah, I, mean, I agree with that. So even that could be falsified. It's so easy to do that. So many people have done it. The best, the most famous has done that. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, I agree too. So like, what, are, what are your goals moving forward? Uh, to create like a new stage of working pit bulldog. Like mine aren't as big as everybody's. I don't like very big dogs. Like creature was probably 55 pounds but he was super stacked Mm -hmm. my male he's about that 52 pounds and he's super stacked all mine are really blocky Mm -hmm. i've kind of gotten hate in the apbt world because of it mine are all really blocky dogs (laughs) so they resemble more of an am staff yeah yeah all my dogs have the same body structure even my bully (laughs) he is super conditioned I posted on bu- him on a, a bully page, and everybody told me he was hungry, that I should feed him. Yeah, that's um, that's the fur mom's talking. Yep. I just did yes, a sir. video on um, on weight and conditioning. Uh, that was actually last week's video, and uh, I kind of brought the hammer down on the fur moms a little bit. Actually, yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I loved the video, actually. Oh, you saw it? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was a. Uh, I even kind of look back and I'm like, man, I I know I hurt somebody's feelings somewhere. No, sometimes they deserve it. They get all in, they get all in your business whenever you're doing your thing, taking care of them the best you can. Hey, they can ride by your house and see them sitting out there and they'll call them. I had a, I have a house right here beside me. Got a fenced in yard and everything. It's for sale. She wants two hundred thirty thousand dollars for it, and uh, she come over here and told me that she thinks my dogs are the reason she can't sell her house. Hmm. Yeah, they call it animal control. They come out here, they pet all my dogs. They know all their names. The police know their names. <laughs> I've talked to them about giving them a bite dog. <laughs> hey, nothing like, wrong with that. No, get in good with them. They're good people. Yeah, definitely. Everybody wants to hate on the police, but they're good people. They've been really good. 100%. And I, and this has always been what I've said. There's... uh. Nothing worse than a, than a bad police officer. Nothing worse. Yeah. But there's also nothing better than a good police officer. Yeah. You when know? you need a police officer, there's a good one there to help you. Most of the time. Yeah. Now, I mind my business. I try to stay out of other people's business because I hate when people talk smack. Yeah. When I love my dogs to the deepest possible. Yeah. Smart. So, who's who's your favorite on your yard right now? Uh, 
it's always going to be my male Mason, even after he's gone. But I like uh, a little black female he produced with my Medusa dog. Her name's Vixen. She's starting to be a pretty promising little dog. Both of them are that I kept. So uh, how do you work the dogs in your yard? Uh, I have treadmills, uh, flirt poles, um, spring pole, and I got like a bunch of concrete around my area so I can walk them all the time. I walk, I do a lot of hand walking. Mm -hmm. That's the thing people don't like to talk about. By what do you mean by hand walking? Like hook a leash to them and let them pull around oh. a certain area. Pick a certain area and let them pull as hard as they can, and they'll learn that area. And when you get out of that area, they'll quit pulling. And you can, you can literally work them in that routine in that area and get the best condition possible. So I have a, you know, I mean, I, I at least train my dogs to an extent, but also. At certain times, I like when they pull. Yeah, yeah, I, I love it. Yeah, they should pull. That's what you mean, then. Yeah, yeah, they sh they should pull. Like you can teach them to pull and not to pull, like by energy. Dogs are all based on energy. How you deal with your energy and theirs gliding affects how the dog will eventually end up when he's older. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, they're completely energy based. What would you say? What program outside of your own are you digging the most right now, past or present? Uh, well, why don't you why don't you give me one from the past and then one you're digging the most right now? I'm not gonna say it's full name, but there's this guy Concrete, and he is straight up about his dogs. Mm -hmm. He is a hundred percent with APBTs. He does it fully respectable. He loves the dogs, but he's fully about it. He's a good guy. Okay. <clears throat> He's a great guy. Now, how about from the past? Mm -hmm. I liked Rod Karshner's yard. His yard was awesome. Uh, Patrick, of course. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I'm really close to Lester Hughes, and his yard was insane. Homer was an amazing dog. Like, oh, you know him personally? No, no. Oh, okay. But I've seen tons of research, tons of I mean, I've done. I've watched all the videos everybody else has. <laughs> right, I got. You. I'm only 23. I'll be 24 in November. I got you. Yeah. Well, hey, for yeah. for being your age, you're, I mean, you're doing your thing. Fuck it. Thank you. I respect it a whole lot. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Um, I've put a lot of dedication and time into it. A whole lot of out of pocket money. I want to see it succeed. They're amazing dogs. Yeah. The working pit bull dog is an amazing dog. That's like you said, not a lot of people knows about it. And there's more of them exist in the dirty south than anywhere. Mm -hmm. Than anywhere. I don't care what anybody says. We have more working pit bull dogs naturally because of the way we bred them during the '90s than anywhere. I gotcha. What do you feed your dogs? Uh, actually, it's a food made by Highland Dog Food Company, and it's called Pride. Mm -hmm. Uh. They got different grades and different colors. I get, I alternate from the white or the red to the black. Mm. And it's actually a corn-based food, and a lot of people don't feed them corn-based feed, and I'm going to get hate for this. But I've always used it. My dad's used it for 20 years. I support it. Yeah, I spend anywhere from like 350 to 400 a month on dog food. On 14 dogs, you would think you'd spend a whole lot more. Right. Have you ever fed raw before? Uh, I don't like it because you have to worm them a lot more. I gotcha. If it's not frozen and prepared properly, the wrong person can mess it up very fast, especially when you condition your dogs as much as I do. Mm -hmm. I would rather just feed them a good, balanced kibble that's got all the qualities they need. Maybe add a little dine, maybe add a little apple cider vinegar, some vegetable oil, a scoop of mayonnaise, something just to beef it up, make them taste it, make it taste good, but... Right. They pretty much get what they need out of that. Right. I used to give my dogs supplements and vitamins, and I don't really do that anymore. Because, like, if they need supplements and vitamins, are they really that quality of a dog? Yeah, actually, uh, I, I believe Carl Burton said something along the same lines. Yeah. Um, he said, I mean, I'd, I'd rather, you know, raise the lower bar 
and, mm-hmm. and make it all about genetics. If my dogs yep. need supplements, I don't want to breed that dog. Eventually, you're going to see a big shift in paper breeders to genetic breeders. They look at gene pools. Mm-hmm. Like, I think Mad Dog explained it. A bunch of people's explained it. But you're going to look at it. And I know Lee Robinson did. Yeah. He explains genetics very well. And if you build on a gene pool, you will get what you're looking for. 100%. That's a baby. And you don't, and, and honestly, like we were saying before, you don't, you don't truly know if a pedigree going all the way back is even really attached to that dog all the way back. I mean, yeah, like somewhere in there, there's probably a lot. I don't know for a fact, but it's, it's hard to have that many truth tellers in a row. Right. (laughs) That's That's a good way of putting it. I mean, not everybody is honest. There's very few out there. Right. That's why I admire people like Lee. They don't try to sell you something that it's not. They tell you, this is my breed. This is what I'm representing. And they represent their self to the fullest. That's pretty much the kind of attitude I have towards it. Right. I mean, that's the reason I decided to go, you know, the band dog direction, you know, for my program once I start it. It's just, I, I'm just going to breed enough for my own collection. and mm-hmm. And I'll have something for sale probably once a year. But, uh, I mean, outside of that, it's just, no, it's a, it's a band dog. It's a, it's a Lawton dog, whatever you want to call it, you know. Yeah. But if you're getting it from me, you know where it came from, and, and that's where it stops. I'm not going to guarantee, well, what pit, blood, pit bull blood did you use? Well, how do you know that's really, well, I don't. But yeah, I'm going by the pedigree as far as I can see it, and you'll get a pedigree from me. And that's just kind of where I'm going to draw the line because – the dog game is so saturated and so screwed up. Yeah, I, de- I definitely am genetic focused. Mm. I look at the dogs that are in front of me, not what's on paper. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> for sure. Um, I did buy a SDR registered female because I'm wanting to get in the show ring. I've never done that. I've never even been to really sport and dog registry shows or anything. So sporting dog registry now i'm just starting to hear about that recently i'm pretty sure it's run by tom garner's son i'm not positive but oh right okay yeah that's tom garner's yeah that's right yes yeah she's she's off brasco and ziva which are both hickson and bushwick dogs so how many litters a year do you have uh uh anywhere from two to three i try not to have three i don't like to produce and after I get this brindle female bred and my red female, two females bred, I won't be producing none for probably two years. Just kind of letting my stuff grow and evaluate what I have and breed what I need to. I, I'm not breeding for money, and I'm only breeding for purpose. I gotcha. To give everybody I look, know and love good quality dogs and a chance to get good quality dogs. I've seen so many people do it bad. I wasn't even involved in breeding two years ago, but I've seen so many people do it bad that it made me want to do it the right way. I mean, I have my dogs outside in the winter and everything. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about Western North Carolina snows, it gets eight inches sometimes. Yeah. Below zero. I just give them lights and shavings and uh, flaps on their houses. And I come out here and work them during the day and I feed them a little heavier. And they don't even that cold. Right. I took a laser gun in my uh, dog houses during the winter. Christmas Eve, I was out here, and I shined a laser in the dog house, and it was 67 degrees in the hottest one, and it was 62 in the, in the coldest one. Ain't nothing wrong with that. No, that's totally warm enough. So pretty much you you breed more or less to keep it in the family. Yeah. Yeah, it's a family bloodline anyway. My male is, and then I got two females that are. And I just ain't trying to produce it and mass produce and give it to the wrong people. Right. That makes sense. It's it's happened in the past with them mm-hmm. in our local area. They've gotten to the wrong people. 